Okay, everyone, so today is Wednesday, and yesterday my father just beat cancer. He had cancer with all the cancer treatments and stuff, and very happy for that. So in honor of that, I'm going to make a video on cancer, like everything that I think about cancer. That's going to be the topic of today's video. So... Cancer is basically, it's a behavior of the cells. It's when your cells continue to multiply and multiply without dying. They do not have the, um, I believe it's an oncogene, the oncogene that causes them to die. So then they are cancerous cells and then they just continue to multiply and multiply and multiply in whatever tissue they're in and being in that tissue that causes uh tumors and those tumors will grow and swell and cause all sorts of issues again depending on what organ or organ tissue they're in this is where complications from cancer can arise if you have cancer in different organ systems because your body needs those organ systems and cancer will interfere with the function of those organ systems so what happens when you have like when you're developing cancer is basically that the genetic switches in your cell for whatever reason there's a genetic component to it and there's also um, a metabolic component to it like cancer cells also have a certain metabolism which is interesting as well so that's a stress metabolism generally they have a much less efficient use of oxygen and ATP than normal cells do, which is why fasting um, clears them out. It's also why chemo and other, like radiation and other sorts of um, cancer killing based therapies cause, um, cause the cancer to die off faster than your normal cells because the cancer cells are less effective at metabolizing energy. I'm practicing balancing the phone on my hands, it's a new skill are less effective at metabolizing energy than the normal cells. So they die off at a faster rate. And in dying off at a faster rate, that allows the cancer to actually die off. So basically, they're the kind of cheap cells. They grow very quickly. They don't die. But they use energy inefficiently. So they also take energy away from healthy cells, which is a huge issue with cancer as well as them taking uh, energy away from healthy cells. So cancer has to do with inflammation and it also has to do with your immune system as well as gene mutations. There's a lot of different factors that go into cancer because as you can see, so cancer also gets fought by your body. Your body doesn't just say, oh, I guess we have cancer. I guess this is just what it is we're not going to be able to do anything about this because we just have cancer your immune system is actually constantly working to um defeat cancer so things that interfere with your immune system are very bad for cancer diseases of the immune system like hiv for instance can cause cancer because your immune system will stop recognizing cancers so your immune system also can get overwhelmed by other things or become inactive due to low metabolism. Low metabolism also has a whole host of other issues with your body. So what I'm really like, as you can see here, I can go on and on and on about the, the interconnectivity of the body with cancer. And you can see how, like, it's very complex. Like you can break it down to specifics. Like, let's say someone gets cancer from a lifetime of smoking. It's like, did they get cancer from the lifetime of smoking or did they get cancer from the smoking causing them to be less energetic because it messed up the airways? And then that lowered their metabolism over time, which made their body less effective at detoxifying certain things, which made the cells work ineffect ineffectively. Like really like it's an entire system problem here. Like, and I, you can't isolate out one thing. So while treating the cancer as an isolated problem is definitely something you can do in certain circumstances that's definitely, I mean, I'm not a cancer expert, so I'm not coming in saying that we should do such and such and such and such, but I am a metabolic expert. So what I'm doing is I'm talking about the metabolic connections of cancer. 
and how cancer connects to the other systems in the body that are influenced by metabolism. Like low metabolism can also affect your immune system. Your immune system has ties to you like what you do on a daily basis, lifestyle, HPA axis, HPA axis is big in metabolism. Circadian rhythm is big in HPA axis. You need to be getting regular sleep and digestion is also big in all of this as well. If digestion is off, if you're ingesting things that mess with digestion, that's gonna interfere with nutrient absorption. It's gonna cause um, bad bacterial overgrowth and stuff and myotoxin in the gut coming from that. And you have toxins that'll mess with your brain function. Gut being the second brain and all that. I mean, not like everyone has issues with gut function, but basically, um, this is interesting. So actually I break this down. I'll link the strong medicine course down below. Cause I actually go into all this in detail in that course it's for at least you start thousands of dollars for this course, but now it's free. Um, my YouTube channel. So take advantage of that. Cause it's awesome. So go check out the course, but going into the HPA axis, metabolic, um, explanation of cancer, you see people developing cancer when they're doing things that really mess with cellular metabolism like toxin accumulation messes with cellular metabolism sedentary lifestyle messes with cellular metabolism um basically body's inability to detoxify or distribute nutrients uh throughout the tissues due to inadequate hydration causes issues with the tissues <laughs> that's funny issues with the tissues in the organs which will then so like let's say you're not drinking enough water and now your liver is dehydrated and your kidneys are dehydrated. So they're not doing their thing quite as well. It's kind of sluggish and um, it's slowing down your metabolism. I mean, your body needs water for chemical reaction. So giving your body a constant stream of high quality water allows these chemical reactions to take place at a rapid rate. It's the same with detoxification. So drinking a lot of water also helps with iron detoxification as well. I'm actually gonna walk back to my car and now and get some more water. Drinking lots of water helps with iron detoxification as well. Iron is the price that we all pay for. So iron's a big factor in cancer as well. Iron influences cell growth of all kinds. So when you see cancer happening, you see iron accumulation in the cells. You also see this with the growth of parasites and other things because again, iron is kind of a main thing you need to generate cells. And I call it the price we pay for using oxygen. Like ultimately like life as, as we are, like as um, not trees basically, we use iron to carry oxygen via hemoglobin. I think even reptiles use hemoglobin. So we have heme, heme, hemoglobin, heme is iron. So we use hemoglobin. We have this nature that requires that we use iron as it oxidizes easily to carry oxygen to our tissues so that we can engage in cellular respiration and um, the use of ATP. So, but iron comes with a price. And this is the thing. So this is the thing with reptiles. Reptiles keep growing throughout their lifespan because until they die from the square cube law because of the accumulation of iron. They have no way of getting rid of iron because their metabolism basically resonates at the level of stress metabolism. So their body must constantly generate tissue in order to store this iron. And then like basically they just eat like a snake, like just eat something. And then that thing just, by our metabolic standards, rots inside of its intestines. And then once it's done rotting and it's absorbed the rottenness, that then stresses the snake out, which then turns on its brain. Its brain turns on only due to a stress response, or at least what our brain determines a stress response. And it goes out and gets some more food and accumulates its process, which is also why it accumulates so much iron because the stress function in our body causes our body to not be able to detoxify iron as well as it should be able to while engaging in normal metabolism. So what we have is iron accumulating in our cells, which is causing higher than normal oxidation in the cell, especially at the site of the mitochondria where the cell is trying to engage in energy generation, which is causing ineffective energy generation, leaning it towards Otto Warburg energy generation, which is leaning it towards, um, that's, that's the cancer thing. So whether that's primarily genetically rooted or if that's rooted primarily in 
uh, metabolism. It really makes no difference at the end of the day because at the end of the day, your body is still trying to kill the cancer. With your immune system, which will operate properly if you have a high enough metabolism, high nutrients, a regulated circadian rhythm, an HPA axis, uh, because ultimately the HPA axis has a lot to do with the gut, which is going to regulate your T regulatory cells, which are going to basically tell your immune system to stop engaging in autoimmunity, which will allow it to actually target the things causing problems instead of simply generating inflammation for you, which is simply going to cause more accumulation of iron in the cell, leading to more oxidative stress. It's just really not good. So there's strategies that you can use to fix this or strategies that address oxidative stress and iron accumulation at the cell. This is not going to necessarily involve a reduction in the consumption of red meat because the, a red meat only diet consisting of like fatty ribeye provides your body with lots of saturated fat, which allows you to detox iron and other heavy metals at a faster rate preventing you from kind of hitting that critical point where the red meat is giving you iron faster than your body can handle it. At the same time, you can consume large amounts of green tea, which while people say, I mean, I looked at all the studies and I believe even the most recent studies say that black tea is more effective than green tea at the iron accumulation detoxification problem. I don't believe it for a second. I think that green tea is far more effective from my own personal experience. Uh, especially like gunpowder green tea when you steep it multiple times and get all of the um, the chemicals out of it, not just the caffeine. You just drink that. And that has effects of the gut, which helps your body detoxify iron because your gut's one of the main detoxifying agents. Also, it helps your body detoxify other heavy metals as well. And the heavy metals are one of the things that lead to the accumulation of iron in the body, which can happen through amalgam fillings. I don't want to get amalgam fillings. I still have to get some cavities like filled or something. I hope they like start to remineralize because I'm not eating any carbs, but I still have to get those checked out because I had to cancel because business stuff. But um, basically though, so uh, yeah, but no amalgam. I don't want amalgam. I want dental cement because I don't want mercury in my mouth because mercury will accumulate in your cells. When your body's trying to get rid of the mercury that's accumulating in your cells in the amalgam fillings, it will take on more iron in order to offload the mercury which as we've already again established has the problem of oxidative stress. So green tea consumption will actually prevent your body from absorbing more uh, mercury from the amalgam fillings while at the same time um, killing the bad bacteria that are preventing your body from detoxifying it, having a amazing effect on brain function, especially encouraging your brain away from stress out brain function, which is going to decrease the instances of stress metabolism. And then at the same time, you're also getting it, encouraging the growth of good gut bacteria, um, absorbing to the tissues, preventing the reaccumulation, redistribution of the heavy metals, gently detoxifying them from the entire body while also encouraging the growth of good bacteria. And then the metabolites thereof also do the same thing while having a, I believe, a longer half-life within the human body, which is really awesome. So green tea is just sort of designed as this like perfect God-given plan for detoxification, but it does come at the price of electrolytes because it'll drain your electrolytes. So I recommend a calcium electrolyte supplement or a supplement with calcium for that. Sleep minerals is great, but you can take whatever you want. I also like salt, love just salt as well. But basically though, Oh, also, yeah, uh, zinc is going to aid with detoxification, magnesium aids with detoxification, salt aids with detoxification. But these things also can encourage the movement of heavy metals out of your bloodstream or out of your tissues into your bloodstream, which can cause people to have autoimmune reactions, again, due to the um, oxidative stress from these things, especially iron. So, and they can, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things. You look up detox symptoms online. So, Toxicity is a key component of cancer for sure. Um, also because toxicity leads to the depletion of enzymes which your body uses for uh, pretty much everything. Otherwise it'd be far too energetically expensive to run your body. So you need these enzymes and the presence of these enzymes assists everything and without them, everything kind of just breaks down. And those, most of the enzymes your body has come from your gut. So again, keeping your gut healthy and feeding your gut lots of food so you have lots of enzymes by keeping your metabolism high 
And having muscle mass through engaging in proper exercise things is of key importance. Because without those, without all those sub systems and primary systems working together to keep your metabolism high and keep your gut working well so that your regulated HPA access triggers the growth of good gut bacteria through also through what you're eating that then produce lots of enzymes to keep your metabolism running high. And all this together leads to uh, a very regulated gut microbiome and a lot of T regulatory cells that prevent you from engaging in autoimmunity. So you can also achieve this if you have cancer through reduction of oxidative stress at the cellular level by ketosis. Ketosis is going to reduce the amount of oxygen your cells require in order to engage in metabolism. So therefore you will be able to, um, you'll be able to actually have your healthy cells be the healthy cells and heal while also starving out the Otto Warburg cells, which rely on less efficient energy generation. So really like, and then it's also like a lot of like mental stuff too, because if your mental thought process is self-defeating, then you're also going to create environments where your mind can't thrive and just like, it, that just leads to low metabolism over time. If people call this aging, I just view aging as the inability to prevent the breakdown of these systems. Like if you just prevent the breakdown of these systems, you don't really seem to age. I don't really know what the limitation of that is. I think there may be a point at which you don't really want to live past because it's just such a pain in the butt that it's like, you're just like, oh my God, like I have to like do all this stuff. But again, though, I don't necessarily know because now that we have modern production and stuff, like I don't have to like get all the stuff myself. I can have like Jeff Bezos ship it to me. So as long as I know what to have people make, like I'm not necessarily going to be the Nicholas Flamel running around plagued by the necessity of finding all the ingredients to make the potion to keep myself alive. Not that I know that that's what Nicholas Flamel is even doing, but he doesn't keep me in the loop like that. But like, I'm just imagining it could be a stressful scenario one would want to avoid. So back to cancer. So really like the thing with preventing cancer is you have to just keep your health at a really high level. Like it's not about trying to root out the root cause. I mean, you want to root out the causes like the toxic food, anything that messes with your gut. Um, even if you're not reacting to the, the toxic stuff, like it's not good for you. It's going to accumulate in your cells and then your cells are going to accumulate more iron in order to offload this stuff. And it comes on hard and fast and mean, like when cancer starts coming on, like I saw it in my dad, like it's just, and like I've seen it in other people as well. Like it comes on hard and fast and mean, and because your cells reach a threshold point, your body reaches a threshold at which it can no longer keep you alive. And then you start what I call actively dying. And that's not fun. So the way you avoid actively dying is building your health reserves. And like where people get really messed up is where they don't have any health reserves. Like if you don't have the ability to walk, which is basically like the best thing you can do for your mitochondria, then you're not going to have the ability to heal from cancer because you're not going to be able to even engage in the minute amount of physical activity. Like literally like if your body degenerates to the point where you can't easily engage in physical activity or even just do it without pain. Like if you, if you just start to degenerate to the point where physical activity is no longer fun and now you, you can't even do it anymore. You just deteriorate so quickly. It's not even funny. So I really like encourage, like I insist on people taking their health seriously, like push-ups, sit-ups, not sit-ups actually, but push-ups, body weight squats, walking, like just walk every day. It's really like not that hard, at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes ain't hard. Like everyone can do 30 minutes. You can definitely do 30 minutes. Stay hydrated, focus on your digestion, um, focus on keeping your metabolism high. You wanna be eating more food like month after month. You wanna be building some muscle so your body actually like has some like stuff going in the engine. It's like. Your body's ultimately like this engine. Each of your cells is an engine and the engine burns fuel in the furnace of your stomach and then does its whole magical thing and distributes this fuel. And when your engine's burning clean, you, can, you give it clean fuel, 
it like distributes the energy to the right places, the cells do the right thing. Everything goes smoothly and then that delivers energy to the brain, to the operating system effectively, which allows everything to continue to go smoothly. But when the engine slows down, this whole thing slows down, it runs less hot, the fuel doesn't burn. The fuel doesn't reach the critical point it needs at burning to release its key constituents that your body needs to function. Like all these things start to break down, but it doesn't need to be that way. And I think that the best way to experience dying, if you're, because everyone's gonna die, you know, like one way or the other is to experience it with a very strong body. Like I would personally rather have my brain or my heart or some organ spontaneously give out in a strong, resilient body than experience slow and painful decay in a weakened state because my physical body was weak. I mean, like really like taking care of this physical body is just like at the very least, like you wanna be able to get out of your bed when you're dying, if you want it. Like you, you don't wanna like just be like this blob of like fat with some bones decaying in it, just wasting away, barely able to take a breath. Like if you're gonna die, like let it come on hard and fast into a strong and resilient human being that was overcome by something that was much more powerful than him rather than just letting yourself rot. It's, and it's really like, it's the, the environment of the body that creates cancer. Like if your body, cause you have cancer cells at any given point in time and your immune system can deal with them. The point is when, and the problem is when the cancer cells get so big that they start interfering with the function of the body and also potentially, I mean, they say they're very aggressive forms of cancer um, I say that all those forms of cancer probably rely on the same metabolism or almost definitely rely on the same metabolism and will be stopped by the same dietary intervention and starvation. I mean, like, I don't know. Again, like, I don't know, but I don't necessarily, I don't think that the solution to cancer is endless rounds of chemotherapy and radiation and removal of organs. I think that the solution to cancer is the removal of the conditions in the body that led to the decay of the organs in the first place. Like my cavities, like these cavities, I got them because I was drinking alcohol. Like that's why I got them. The only other cavity I got, got because I was drinking soda. Like I stopped drinking soda, I didn't get any more cavities. So I was like, I'm an adult and I'm gonna be fancy with my alcohol. And then the fucking teeth start rotting. It's retarded. It's literally so fucking stupid. So I'm like drinking my alcohol, like, and then my teeth are on. I'm like, okay, like I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I swear to God, I want another cavity. Like my brushing and floss habits haven't even like been the best, but I don't get cavities unless I poison myself. I mean, I think you brushing and flossing is good for like mouth health and all this stuff, but, and just like not having stinky breath. But like at the end of the day, when we poison ourselves, the systems that keep our body alive decay. And then we feel like we have to maintain those systems one by one individually. But we weren't meant to. We were given a guidance system in the brain and a furnace in the gut and a million mediators that will manage all the problems that emerge from this junction if we merely look at what produces health in people and what produces disease and we consistently do that which produces health and not disease. It is a matter of trajectory and decisions that create that trajectory and maintaining those via systems. So this is kind of like, I think a great place to end that video. So subscribe for more related health topics, life optimization, health, fitness, high performance business, and just really in-depth explorations of topics, some quick stuff. Leave a comment down below if you have a question. I may make a video responding to it. I don't really know what this channel is yet. It's, it's my ideas on things. We had a lot of them, and that's where the long-form content comes in, so I can just get into all of this and serve as an index of ideas, and then we can see where that goes. Done.